I've got something to tell you about all the prison escapes that I've done. A lot of the escape plans had flaws, yes, just like the prisons themselves. But that's not what I have to tell you. You see, for every one of my prison escapes, I've been holding back. The reason I've been doing this is for the sake of theatrics. It was a far better challenge. Look where that got me. In every one of my prison escapes, I've restrained myself in one way or another. Not letting myself smuggle in items, not dying, and the one that I did for every single one of them was being alone. But ironically, the best way to break out of prison is to break into prison and kill the prisoner. Or in other words, have someone else break in from the outside. Someone like me. I'm going to be breaking into multiple in inescapable prisons to rescue an armor stand named Delilah. I can use anything I want to, but I have to use dirt somewhere in the process. This is completely pointless, except that I thought that it would be funny. All of this because you weren't satisfied, were you? You wanted to see a 100% valid escape, no matter how boring and mundane it may be. Even if the original escape plan was so much more compelling, you wanted to see how I would actually escape these prisons. The methods that, feasibly, no guard could stop, and the version of Mithridak that isn't restrained. You want to see it? Fine. We begin with Pandora's Vault. It doesn't have a world download, so I'm going to be breaking in through the places in the map that we see on stream, except for the beginning part. I start by doing this when Sam is offline, AFK, or away from the prison. I could also do this as a visitor, but I'd have to kill Awesome Dude once I got inside. To begin, I either hijack the portal from the nether, or break in from the outside. For this example, I'm going to be breaking in from the outside. Here's my inventory. Now that I'm inside, I need to move fast. I need to get into the cell as quickly as possible. Also, this is one of the prison escapes that barely uses dirt, just because I have no way to use it, but I do sneak it in here and there. Now at the end of this waterway, there's going to be a netherite gate blocking me, and I will drown if I try to break it normally. Thankfully, I brought a sponge. Then I splash fire resistance and use my pearls. There's our prisoner. We need to make them set their spawn, and then I can drink milk to get rid of the fire resistance, break this block, and then break the bed, and once we die in the lava, we will respawn at the world spawn point. I also know how to get the prisoner or prisoners out alive with this method, <clears throat> if anyone specific is watching. I also have 11 different escape plans from the inside. Three of the 11 use glitching, and four of the 11 use dying, but the rest can be achieved normally. Hit me up if you would need those for, for anything. Poseidon's Vault was once considered to be the next great innovation in Minecraft redstone engineering. Now, under the shadows of the behemoths that are dominating the scene, it seems quite inferior in comparison. But I'd say it's just as easy to break over my knee as every other one of these prisons. The easiest way to get to the cell would be to dig straight down, but I'm gonna go with a more stealthy and quick option. Here's my inventory. First thing I do, of course, is to splash invis to hide my name tag. I'm going to use this beacon to give me haste, and then I simply need to access the redstone lines to make my way to the prison.
Once we're inside, we get our first mining fatigue effect, but I managed to obtain this legendary item called a bucket of milk, which counteracts the effects immediately. Now that we've broken a block, the alarm will immediately be sounded and all of the guards will be teleported back to the control room, but unfortunately for them, they're too late. Because I have devised a brilliant plan to defeat their bed respawn trap, which is simply placing a piece of dirt in this corner. Now the bed is obstructed and once I kill myself and the prisoner, we will, once again, respawn at the world spawn point. Ah uh, yes, Hades Vault. This prison has 18 versions to its name. It is so advanced that it should be at least a little bit harder to get to the- Nope, I pearl to the top of the prison and then dig straight down. Alright, it's a little more nuanced than that in the lava and water part bit, but y you know what I mean. Even if the guards see me with the composter glitch, they can't do anything to stop me. It would take too long to go out, around, above, and into the prison to kill me before I reach the cell. And what are they gonna do? Kill the prisoner? Anyways, once I reach the main cell, I reuse the absolutely devastating tactic of placing a block of dirt in the corner of the cell. And then once I kill myself and Delilah, we escape yet another prison. This prison is quite honestly very janky. It has so many flaws. And when I escaped version 2, apparently they updated it and made it even worse. The inside nether portal is made out of crying obsidian. What? What the heck? The prison is raised one block and they just forgot to fix the outside, I guess. The guard room is the worst thing that I have ever seen. There's practically no composters. And all of the elder guardians die when you spawn them in with the command blocks. They just all suffocate to death because of entity cramming. Now, Titan's Vault is a bit different. I could just mine straight down like I did in Hades Vault, and that would work eventually, but the building is all the way to height limit with obsidian, and that's gonna take a few decades, so I'm gonna go with the easier option. Here's my inventory. I need to sneak into the prison with either the prisoner as they're being captured or the visitor as they're visiting. Right before I enter through the portals, I take an invisibility potion. Once the visitor is inside, they're going to close the portal and start the entry process, but I'm going to stay behind. Now I'm in the top part of the portal. I'm going to wait until most of the guards have left the vicinity before I start mining. And as you can see, I do not have any mining fatigue, in part because the Elder Guardians almost always sync up in these types of prisons, and also probably because they all suffocated themselves to death. And this may be loud, so when I think the time is right, I enter Pearl through the wall and upwards into the basalt generator below the cell. Now here's where the dirt comes into play for this escape. I'm going to use it to make an ender pearl cubby where I can glitch into the cell without sounding any alarms. And once I'm here, same as always, set spawn, break bed, die. And there's another one down for the count. Glacier's Orb gave me quite the headache trying to escape it solo, because against solo players, it's quite difficult to break. But from the outside... Alright, here's my inventory, you ready? Okay, so I go to these exact coordinates, then I build up to these exact coordinates, and then, get ready for it, I dig in a straight line. Once I'm inside the cell, here's where the dirt comes into play. I use it to block up the bed trap, and then we both jump into the lava and end up at the world spawn point. Ares Vault. This prison was updated since my last encounter with it, where I escaped single-handedly from the inside with no items and then blew it up. But you see, no upgrades. Beat the digging straight down strategy. Here's my inventory. I elytra up, go to these cords, then look down. I hold my left mouse button and then F3 plus T. This force reloads all the textures in the game, but it also sticks me into a permanent breaking state until I click again. So basically I can just let this thing go AFK for about 30 minutes while I go grab a donut and by the time I come back it will still be digging straight down for me. And I don't even need to see the prisoner for this one. I chose this spot to dig down specifically so that I will go right to the top of the bed and break it. Once I do, I elytra out and the prisoner can simply jump into the pit, killing themselves, and then respawning at the world spawn. Now 
now we're getting into the chunk band prisons. These are prisons that all use basically the same chunk band layout. There's permanent outer chunk bands, toggleable inner chunk bands, and then a suicide switch which will permanently ban the entire prison and everyone inside of it. These prisons are where it gets real. This is where the prison builders actually tried to step up their game in prison making. Although, of course, like always, they failed, and just made subpar remixes of essentially the same prison. They're just as easy to break as any other, even if they use a suicide switch that, in reality, nobody would have the guts to press in an actual survival scenario. But for the sake of argument, for all of these prisons, it would be wise to have two people doing it. One doing the escape method that I'm about to show you, and the other waiting outside. If the person inside messes up in some way and triggers a suicide button, then he can tell the other escapist, hey, they suicided, which is actually a blessing in disguise because now there's no guards to worry about. They all chunk band themselves to preserve their pride, I guess, so then the person on the outside can slowly chip away at the prison with wither cannons or TNT flying machines until they get to the chunk band machines, destroy them, and then get the prisoner out that way, because there's actually no way to counter withers and wither cannons. Some may argue that bubble elevators stop them, but all you need to do is have the wither destroy the soul sand. Vertex's Vault. It's considered to be one of the best prisons in the prison community because of its high-tech roof player detector, among other things. But to me, it's merely another obstacle that needs to be removed from my path. So here's my inventory. And once again, I'm going to sneak in with either the prisoner when they're entering or the visitor when they're entering. And before I go through the nether portal, I'm going to splash invis and slow falling potions. Now there's a guard and a composter glitch watching the visitor's every move, but they can't see me. When the visitor gets out of the portal, the guard will shut off the portal, and we're going to do the same thing we did in Titan's Vault, but this time, the guard would see if we place down water, and that's what the slow falling potion is for. I jump, and then as soon as the pistons fire, I pearl, and then I'm in the top of the nether portal. This obviously wasn't the best example, you can do it much cleaner and quieter, but it gets the job done nonetheless. It's much harder to do without a slow falling potion, so that's why I used the potion in the first place. But Mithrodek, couldn't they see the pearl in your hand, or the pearl when you threw it? Absolutely not. You see, the guards can see us, yes, but they can only see our feet. Their own tunnel blocks their line of sight to the top of the portal, which means I can just stay here until the time is right where I can make my move. But before I get to the Swiss cheese, I'm going to stop at the Y coordinate 57 where I can find the observer link to the roof detector. I disable it and make sure not to cross this chunk border and then continue mining my way to the top. I now need to be speedy because the visitor may be entering the safe chunks and I don't want to be chunk banned. So as soon as I'm here, I'm instantly going to pearl in and go to these cords. But I'm going to mine one block off because the observer will be triggered by the eight blocks surrounding it as well. Then I dig straight down into the cell, then build back up, obstruct the bed with dirt, and then I go back down to die with the prisoner, and we both respawn at the world spawn point. Ah, the pyramid, also known as Minecraft's laggiest prison. It's so laggy that my replay mod refused to record whenever I was in the world. What the pyramid essentially is, is a ripoff of Vertex's vault and a ripoff of Gaia's vault, both fused to make the most disgustingly bloated prison to ever exist. They even filled it up with block 36, which should be next to, if not completely impossible to do in survival. Obviously these guys made the whole thing in world edit, they just copy and pasted the Gaia's vault system into a big triangle, and then added some poorly placed outer chunk bands. But nonetheless, I'm still going to be breaking into it the fastest way that I know how, which is, again, sneaking in with the visitor or prisoner while invisible. Here's my inventory. This door will close when the visitor goes out, and I want to wait for all of them to get to the end of this hall before I start making my move. They will be far enough away not to hear anything. As you see, I just got a very unlucky Elder Guardian right here, just as I was about to break this dispenser, but all I need to do is drink milk and then splash invis and I'm ready to go again. Right now, I'm above the blast shield windows, and I'm holding my shift key while I crawl. This makes me completely silent when crawling, but it actually doesn't reduce my speed at all, which is a bonus. Then once the visiting party is far enough away, then I start to mine.
Now I've accessed the redstone line above the windows next to the cell. All I need to do is to be patient, make sure there's no guard name tags around, and then when the coast is clear, I move. I also need to break these observers in a very specific pattern, otherwise they will detect my presence and alert the whole prison about me. Then I use the dirt to block up pretty much everything and then I use it to tower up to the main cell. Gaia's vault is the magnum opus of prisons. All of the prisons that came after it and blatantly copied its mechanisms still never really came close to the amount of security this place had. This thing had so much time and effort put into it, it's insane. And it easily has 10 times the amount of security than any other prison does. But as we all know, 10 times zero is still zero, and this place is just about as secure as a wet napkin. This escape is going to be very precise and very dependent on coordinates. Here's my inventory. Also, I'm going to be doing this escape without the mining fatigue administered by the impossible Elder Guardians that they have. Although with the mining fatigue, it would just take longer. Nothing changes. Remember to use the F3 plus T trick. In my original video, I underestimated the range of the chunk bands and claimed that I could stand still and pearl past them. That was my bad. It was wrong. Whatever am I going to do? If only I had an elytra. Now I keep F3 and chunk borders on so I can know exactly where I am. Keep in mind, I'm starting a chunk or two away from where the outer chunk bands begin. I aim straight up and fly until I get to 350 or 400 in the Y direction. Obviously, I'm going to be higher if I start further back. Then I line up my crosshair to look east, and then I throw a pearl and snap back in the opposite direction to avoid getting chunk banned. And then my pearl will land right in the center of the volcano, which is mostly safe, although there's one part that's sometimes chunk banned, so I need to be careful. I go to these cords and then dig down. I dig until I get to 89 on the y-axis. This is right above the observers. And now here's where Gaia's vault shoots itself in the foot. It has an AFK tunnel that the guards have to use so that the guardians don't desync and the auto-suicide doesn't enable. Although to make sure they didn't ban themselves while using it, they have to disable the area 2 chunk ban, which unbans a few blocks off of the side of the roof detector. Now this will take patience, but what I'm going to do is, every time I see a guard name tag in the area 2 chunk ban, which is facing north, then I know that the chunk ban is not enabled, and I start my in that direction until I see his name tag stop at the entrance, in which case this gives me enough time to pearl back to the safe area of the tunnel that I made to wait for someone to go AFK again, and I keep doing this until I get to negative 198 on the Z axis in F3. Once I do this, then I start mining down. This is best done if the guard has just started in AFK. What you're seeing is the roof detector, and what I'm doing is mining out and around it to slip in unnoticed. I'm making a hook shape, but I'm also always right above the AFK track, which means that it would be impossible to ban me without banning the AFK guard. As soon as I see this redstone, I immediately pearl in and then keep purling until I get past around negative 160 in the south direction. Now I'm in the unchunk band area, so I can cool it for a minute and rest. But once again, once the time is right, I need to mine down here at negative 163. And I need to be very careful not to touch any redstone near this observer. Now I'm crawling through the vents, which obviously leads me into revealing my master plan to escape the most technologically advanced prison in Minecraft, which is, of course, becoming Among Us. As soon as I dig down to this specific block, the water from the suicide chunk ban wipes out all the redstone. Basically, the machine breaks itself, and I don't really need to do anything except to seal the area with dirt. Now I'm going to go down this slime block signal line to access this vent. Obviously, in real time, I would be breaking the blocks at regular intervals to stop any guards from hearing me. Then I need to dig straight down here, which will take the longest, until I get to a specific redstone line. And once I'm here, I basically have access to every cell, since there are redstone lines connecting all of them practically, but for ease of use, I'm going to be breaking into the closest one to me, the west cell. Once I see the shelter, I can kill it with the harming potions and then break the bed, and then I mine upwards to get to the cell. And then I pearl glitch into the cell to avoid any alarm that may trigger, and then I splash lingering harming potions at our feet, and just like that, I've escaped Gaia's vault. But in truth, 
That was only one of the many escapes that I've come up with to this menace in the past month or so. I could slowly mine in from the side with wither cannons. I could disable the suicide like in this method and then get stasis out and then wither in from the top. Even if they got rid of the AFK tunnel, I could still mine a block on the top roof detector, get stasis out, wait for the chunk band to go away, and then do it again until I'm through. Or I could have another person help me and go in from the bottom to trigger the lockdown light in that area while I mine in from the top as the sirens are blaring, and by the time they find and kill that person at the bottom, I'm through. Or I could go in with the prisoner, invisible, and do things from there, or I could just slowly destroy it block by block with wither cannons and TNT dupers until it was nothing but a crater in the ground. And I could do it too. I would know exactly where the chunk bands are because I have memorized each one's placements. I have studied this place in and out. I know every block of this prison by heart. I've been obsessed ever since they imprisoned me for nothing and killed my best friend. But then again, we could just accept the fact that no prison is inescapable, really. Because there is no counter against wither cannons or ender pearl stasis chambers, or even the fact that the easiest escape is to simply not click on any beds or even enter the prison in the first place. I mean, what are they gonna do? Threaten to kill your pet bird?